remember how I was hoping I would get more peas. I definitely am going to get more peas. I came out to the shade really quick because it's very bright outside. We have a lot of harvesting to do today. Um, I want to get the peas harvested, the cauliflower harvested, the cabbage harvested. Get those inside to preserve them. So let's get to it. We've got a lot of work to do. I was kind of nervous that this garden hod, the, the holes were going to be too big and the peas were going to fall through. But these peas are so big that it's not an issue. So I want to show you guys if you've never harvested peas. I just, let me put that one down. I just take them like this and take my thumb and pop them right off the plant. Look at all of these peas. I planted these peas in March, I think at the beginning of March, and they grew, they were a little slow to get growing, and then I fertilized them one time with fish emulsion, um, and whenever they were, I don't know, probably a month old, and they took off when it started to get just a little bit warmer, like 50s and 60s, they took off and they have produced a lot. Some of these I can't reach. I'm vertically challenged. I know sometimes I can just completely geek out over this stuff, but isn't it crazy that you planted like one seed and it gives you this huge plant and all of these peas off of it? I mean, I've been gardening for like four or five years now on and off since I was 18 really, but consistently for four or five years. And I just am always amazed at when you plant, when you plant a seed and it just gives you all of this lush, beautiful, uh, I just, I just can't. YouTube makes it really nice because I don't have very many people in my circle that like geek out over this stuff. <laughs> so whenever I talk about it and then you guys comment and say like, yeah, they're my plant babies too, or you know, just you geek out over it with me. It, it's really nice to have people in my circle. So this is where we're at right now. I've still got a whole bunch left. Okay, we're gonna have to go inside and get my rue apron that goes over me because I'm having to get up on the raised bed to pick the peas at the very top. This is a rue apron and what it, what it does is it has a pouch. It has a pouch here and at the bottom of the pouch, it has these strings that, well, if I can find, oh, right here. Um, it, it, the little knot is right here and you can just clip it, push those little strings down and then it holds. So it makes a pouch and then you can harvest and put your harvest inside the little pouch here. And it's pretty big and it just goes around you, straps around you, and buckles in the back. This uh, apron, I do have a big gardening hod too, but I like the Rue apron because what I'm about to show you is I have to get up on top of the, the raised bed and get these peas down, and it'll just make it really easy where I can just throw them right in the pouch. Okay, don't laugh at me. Okay, I think I got them all, but they really blend in with the plant. You guys are going to be really surprised when you see all these peas in my rue apron. I got these in the hod, and then I got the ones in my apron, but I actually hear Iva waking up, so we're going to have to go in and get her. Now, I've told you guys on other videos that a big goal of mine this year, I'm so sorry, it's so sunny and harsh out here, but a big goal of mine this year is to save seeds, so there's a few pods that are quite big and I'm just gonna leave them I'll show you one so how you would save seeds for peas is you just let them go and see how it's kind of getting deformed and big and bulky it's 
like pretty bulky. You're just gonna let that dry on the plant. And then you can crack it open and save the seeds out of it. All right, let's go in. Let's go in and get Iva. All right, let's see what we got. So whenever you're ready to take take the, the harvest out of your pouch, you just undo the clips. Okay, well I thought that was a lot more than it was. But, I mean, that's a pretty good little pea hole. There's not a whole lot of plants out there, so that's not bad. Now, what we're gonna do with these peas when we come back inside is we're going to blanch and freeze them. Uh, blanching is just when you boil them and stop the enzyme process so they stop ripening. It kind of preserves their color and pr preserves the nutrients in them. So we're going to be blanching and freezing these. We've already eaten one meal off of these peas, so I mean, I don't think that's a bad harvest. Whenever we freeze them, take them out of the freezer to eat them, we'll just probably saute them or um, put them in a stir fry or something like that. Are you ready to go outside? You want to get some cabbage? <laughs> Here, your cup? Come on, let's go outside. She's not real happy. What's the matter? What's wrong with you? What's the matter? Come here, come here. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can harvest this while holding her. So I've got my colander and then my a knife. Really, I could probably do this without cutting. So I'm just going to twist. Twist, twist, voila. So you can save these um, cabbage leaves and use them also. The reason why I was gonna just use the knife and cut them off at the base is just so that I didn't bring a bunch of dirt in and roots. Maybe I can cut it off. Oh, looky there. Look at that head of cabbage. So this one you can see didn't really form that much of a head. Go ahead and cut that off. I don't know exactly how I'm going to preserve these yet. But we'll figure it out. Now we need to get the cauliflower. I'll see if she wants to sit in her dome. And I'll try to do that with two hands. These cauliflowers are definitely ready to see how they're kind of, this is just one big bud. This will actually go into a flower and I'll probably leave this one, maybe this one, but this one is probably ready. These could probably get a little bit more size on them. That one there looks pretty good. But if you've been watching my videos, um, I've planted squash down in the middle of these and that is just so when I tear all this out, there's something else growing. Here's a squash here. So I just planted some zucchini and squash. All right, so I'm just gonna put the leaves down and cut it off right down here at the base. Careful. So go ahead and ripping these out. That way my squash can get some sun and not be shaded by these cabbage leaves and what I'll do is just put these in the wheelbarrow and take them to the compost pile that we don't have started yet <laughs> but that I plan on getting done pretty quickly and letting these compost 
you can see here there's a squash 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 tucked underneath that cauliflower there's two squash there's a squash so this is going to be the squash bed are you content now <laughs> There's all my cauliflower down in my apron. All right, we've got our cauliflower harvested. We've got our cabbage harvested. We've got our peas harvested. Now let's go in and preserve it. My favorite part. It's so satisfying putting things in the freezer or canning them once you've grown them. It's so satisfying. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, we dropped the cabbage. We'll put this one in. The apron. She is pulling up. I'm just gonna I'm gonna set these on the porch really quick. So we just got three little heads of cauliflower. This one really was looking like it needed harvested like a week ago. This is just a little head of cabbage that probably could have went another week or so, but you can see the damage on it. It's not, not a whole lot, but I figured I would just go ahead and get these harvested and preserved so that the squash can grow. And we'll have another crop of cabbage in the fall. So I'm impressed. I'm impressed with this little harvest um, that we have. Now I just want to get it preserved. Oh, it's hot. Look at my, my cheek, red my cheeks are. I don't think I've got her nap out. She's uh, a little bit grouchy. So I need to maybe sit down for a second, try to feed her and get her content long enough where I can hear her. Content long enough where I can uh, start the process of preserving these things So I don't want to get it started because once you get these things in the in the water and boiling you need to get them out into ice water um, You don't want to overcook it before you freeze it. So It's just gonna have to wait a couple minutes. So She's she's content for just a second and I figured while I'm feeding her and stuff I'm gonna go ahead and grab all that the cabbage and the cauliflower and I'm gonna put it in my sink soak it in some salt water for a little bit um, this just helps uh, you know if there's any buggies or sluggies or critter things in there um, they'll come out in that salt water in the sink I've just rinsed my sink out real good I'm gonna start the cold water I'm just gonna rinse these off real quick, getting the outer dirt off. Finer grain salt would probably be um, more ideal for this, but this is what I have right now, so I'm just gonna put a little bit in there. All right guys, so I've got my hot water going into my pot. I'm gonna get it on the stove. So I got that on the stove. I got my peas. I'm gonna give them a quick rinse. What I did was I just looked up um, how long I need to blanch uh, snap peas for. And it says you need to blanch them for about 90 seconds, a minute and a half. So I'll get those blanching. Then after you pull them out, you want to stick them in some ice water. So it completely stops the cooking process. So that's what we'll be doing. I'm gonna cut the ends off of these. You can see it still has some of the plant on the end there so I'm just gonna cut these uh, the ends off and uh, then we'll get started all right so I've got my peas washed I got my water about to start boiling and then I've got my ice here I need to put water in it though I'm gonna go ahead and lay out this um, pan to lay the peas out on and that's what I'm going to stick in the freezer once I get these blanched now I'm just gonna use the slotted spoon to take them out of the ice water and I put quite a bit of ice in this bowl and that's just because when you put the hot peas in there it tends to melt the ice pretty quickly. All right, so you can see how this is boiling. I'm gonna take this so I don't burn my fingers. Well, that works, pick it up like that. And I'll do the other half in the second batch. And I'm gonna let this come back to a boil before we start our timer. All right, I'm gonna start my minute and 30 second timer. I'm just gonna kind of move them around because you can see that they're kind of floating on top of the water and I just wanna make sure that they get real nice and blanched. All right, timer's done. Go ahead and get them moved to the ice water. Give those a little swish around in there. 
And then I'm going to go ahead and dump in my second batch. While those are coming back up to a boil, I'm going to go ahead and start scooping these out of the ice bath. And I don't think that there's really a determined time that you need to leave them in the ice bath just until they're cool. And these are not hot anymore at all. And what I'll do, <laughs> what I'll do after I get all these laid out is I'll go ahead and put some more ice in this bowl. That way the water's nice and cold for the second batch to come out. The reason I'm doing it this way is because I want these to be pretty much flat in the freezer uh, whenever they freeze. That way I, when I put them in a Ziploc bag and I want to use them, I can just get a handful and take them right out of the bag really easily if I don't want to use all of them. That way they don't freeze together and clump together. So let's get these in the freezer. All right, we'll come back when those are frozen. And I think what I'm gonna do is just cut up the cauliflower and we're gonna use that for dinner tonight since there's only three small heads. And then the cabbage, I think with the cabbage, since there's not a ton of it, I may put that in the refrigerator. I don't know, we'll see. All right, so I pulled these peas out of the freezer. I'm just taking a metal spatula and kind of getting them unstuck from the pan. Then I've got a uh, gallon Ziploc freezer bag. Now what I'll do with these is just put them in the freezer and kind of lay them flat. And then there you have it. You've got your peas preserved. Now I want to show you guys something else before I end this video. I've got my cauliflower in the oven for dinner tonight. I have made some cabbage for a side and I want to show you what those are looking like. So I just sauteed the cabbage and some butter and garlic. I got my husband's sauteing and butter and garlic. I put some cayenne pepper in his, some ground ginger, and then there is the cauliflower. And I got, uh, I boiled it for a couple minutes until it got a little bit soft. And then I put some Swiss cheese and Parmesan on top with some garlic salt. So hopefully those things turn out really well. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me today and watching. I hope you guys en are enjoying these Preserve the Harvest videos. If you haven't yet, consider subscribing from one gardener to another. See you guys in the next one.